So think of it like these five contiguous memory blocks living in the heap section, okay? And you need to create a variable which will reference to it. So let's say you create a variable called as array and it points to this, okay, to this array. So what you need to actually do, so this one variable actually lives in the stack, okay, and this actual array lives in the heap. This is something to note, okay. But let's see how we can go and create in our JS environment. So I've gone to the lead code playground for our practice, okay, and we'll create a variable. So declaring a variable can be done by using var, let, and const, a thing which we can discuss later. So I've used a const variable. It means that we cannot reinitialize this variable again. So our name of the variable is array, and I go and create a one, two, three, four, five. So what it has done, it has allocated a memory of one, two, three, four, five in the heap section. Okay, and I'm holding a reference via array variable, right? So this is how we can declare 1D array. Now, how we can declare a 1D array and later on initialize it with some default values, which is a normal use case, right? So let's try to do that. So you can do it and I'll name it as array dynamic. So let's say I want an array of size five, right? And initially I don't want it to be filled with anything, right? So I'll just leave it as blank. So now if I run it and print my array dynamic, you will see that my five size array is nothing but holding undefined, okay? So if you don't fill it with anything, it will be like it will be filled with undefined elements, okay? So this is how you create a one dimensional array and something which we will use a lot in our upcoming lessons. So let's go and now create a 2D array. So I want you to visualize this again very clearly, right? So think of it as a heap again, okay? And you need to visualize it a 2D array as a 1D array, okay? Where each items in that array is itself an array, okay? So think of it like this is a 1D array, okay? And uh, let's say I refer it by something like to dim array, correct? So this is a variable that lives in our stack and we point it, okay? Reference a 2D array and we'll see how to create a 2D array. So we first create a 1D array, okay? And each item we create, so each item is filled with 1D arrays itself. So this is nothing but a 2D array. And we'll try to see if you are given a number of rows and number of columns, how to implement this logic. So let's go ahead. So let's say you have a number of rows as mm, five, right? And you have a number of columns as four, okay? So we are trying to build a five cross four 2D array. So as I told you, okay, the first, thing to do is to create a 1D array, okay? So let's name, as you see in the diagram, I have created a 2D array, which is pointing to this 1D, one dimensional array, right? So what we'll do is we'll create 2D array, and this is nothing but an array, okay, which I don't want to fill initially with anything, okay? So can you tell from number of rows and number of columns, how much or what variables should I assign over here, okay? So think of it like, your number of rows, okay, is actually the number of items that we are gonna fill in this array. And we'll soon see this. So let's assign this as number of rows, okay? And now our job is to go and fill each row, right? And each item will be an array itself, correct? So right now, uh, think of it like we are looping over this two dimensional array sorry so we will loop from zero and we'll go till the length of this array right we have to go from here to here and fill each items correct so we'll go and loop till number of rows okay which is basically from zero to number of rows minus one so we'll loop till it and our job is to fill each indices correct so one thing to th think about it that once you create an array, you can basically use this kind of syntaxes which you have used in other languages, right? That is square brackets, i, and you can access any element inside that array. So your each element of that 
array will be an array itself so think of it like this right and again we need to not fill it with anything as of now okay because we have not yet decided what will be the actual elements inside the array correct but what will be the number over here so you can think of it like this is a final 1d array okay with how many items that is number of rows okay that is five items one two three four five correct and each item will be an array itself correct so we'll go array of i is equal to array correct so we just need to assign and we have just done it but what will be the size of the array which we have just assigned to the item correct that will be the number of columns so this is a number of rows and this is a number of columns if you can visualize it correctly so we just assign the number of columns okay and let's assign with some random variable called as nine okay so we'll go and try to print our 2d array and see what it is right so two dimensional array uh, let's yep so if i run it yes this is what we wanted right so it has four columns and five rows so this is how you can create a two dimensional arrays okay and these are the building blocks of the problems that we will solve so i want you guys to really practice and grasp this because i have used all these ways to actually solve a problem in the interview so we'll see you in the next data lecture